Here's an easy way to control your appetite, your energy, and to improve behaviors that lead to healthier eating. Here's an easy tip. Start your day off with a high protein, high fiber meal, both of which have been shown to control satiety for the entire day. In other words, you eat a breakfast that has a good amount of protein and a good amount of fiber, regardless of what you eat later on, you're less likely to have cravings and you're less likely to overeat. So this one simple tip alone can actually make a profound difference. Doug, will you look up for me um, for male, male and female average, uh, you know, minimum fiber intake? I want to say, you know, 25, 25. To, 25 to 35 grams. Yeah. Somewhere yep. in that range is like the bare minimum. 25 to 30. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Not bad. Not <laughs> On bad. fire. Still, 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 around still exactly still. that amount. <laughs> you know that fiber? Well, you know, the re I, I like, I love this tip, Sal, because, and people have been listening to the show for a long time. I've heard us talk about, you know, one of the strategies that we use when we are dealing with a weight loss client, um, ironically, when we get somebody who is trying to lose 50 to 100 pounds, uh, the first thing that we do is actually add to their diet, which seems like that seems weird. Why yeah. would you do you're that? Supposed to take away. Right. You're supposed to take away. And what what I found is like it's I'm adding things like fiber, like protein, like healthy fats because water. Yeah, water. Like when I assess someone's diet. There's so much that they're they're missing, and instead of telling them they can't have something and and, and restricting them and, and playing that psychological game with them, I like to in, uh, uh, add something. And and fiber is, I would say my my top five uh, things that I would adjust at the beginning. And the thing that I thought was always really interesting about this was, uh, and we talked a little bit about this with Kelly Starrett, is how many people are so disconnected from how their food is affecting their digestion and their stool. And just people thought that, that that's how they poop all the time. Like it's constipated and like this, or yeah. don't shit for the I've, whole day. I had an explosive day today. Yeah. Right. And, and, and they <laughs> just, just happens. they just chalk it up and have no idea or they don't, they just uh, assume that's it's their genetics, I guess, or uh, you know how their body operates or it's just the luck of the, the roll of the dice. And it's like, <sighs> no, you're like, you know, constantly under eating in fiber once we get that right watch and they're like oh my god it feels so much I, better i would i'll, yeah. I'll estimate that a good 70 percent of <clears throat> people who have issues with constipation would be solved by simply eating um, adequate amount of fiber and drinking enough water literally those two simple things yeah. right there and and now why why do you want to be regular well when you store your, your stool for longer than you should. So you're not full of shit. Yeah, that's right, right there. Uh, but no, you you like you can cause buildup of things like estrogen. One of the ways your body gets rid of estrogen, both men and women, is through the stool. Causes inflammation, discomfort. Then all of that affects your behaviors, right? It can make you feel irritable, uh, low energy, which then can oftentimes, especially in modern society, leads to um, reaching for food as a comfort. And if you think about people who are obese, it's not because they're hungry all the time. It's because they have cravings and cravings come from trying to make yourself feel better um, through eating food. So if you feel good, you tend to eat uh, in a more healthy way. Um, when you feel bad, you tend to eat you know, worse off. This is why after a day of drinking this is when people like yeah. the day after when you have a hangover, you tend to want to eat garbage. Or if you have poor sleep. You tend to want to eat garbage, but it's, it's funny what you say, Adam, cause it took us a long time to figure that out. Like we're literally giving people the cheat code right now. It took me 10 years to figure that out Yeah, is I would tell people to hit the protein targets, hit their fiber targets, drink more water, which is adding. And then they would all lose weight. Right. Why? why? Because they ate less. Satiating. They were more satiated, better behaviors. And also too, I mean, who likes walking around with a distended gut, you know, and like a lot of times too, like, I mean, there's bloat factor and all that but like you just don't have that perception of yourself in a positive light and so it's like you just kind of get into that uh posture where yeah. you know everything is sort of like down and so it's like you're not bringing good energy uh into into your workouts into like your activities going forward so it's like all this stuff sort of uh, it's 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 like a one big loop you're in yeah the, and the data by the way on fiber is pretty damn good and Lots of people actually think or have tried to make the argument that fiber should be considered an essential macronutrient. Now, I know the argument against that um, because I guess you could survive without fiber. But the, but the reason why there's an argument saying that it should be considered essential is because there's so much data that shows its uh, health benefits. Now, there are people on the other side of the spectrum, like the carnivore diet type people that say, oh, it's not essential or whatever. 
people who tend to respond really well to eliminating plants out of their diet have underlying autoimmune issues and the plants tend to trigger those. Yep. If you're in that category, that's different. Like if you're eating something that's triggering autoimmune issue, then that you need to focus on that first. But the vast majority of people, and again, the data is pretty damn good on this. I would also still challenge that too, by the way. I would, I would, and what I mean by that is that, um, I, I would I would challenge the person who feels that way about their their issues with uh, um, not eating vegetables and they're on the carnivore diet for autoimmune issues and finding vegetables that actually still agree with you that there's probably still some out there and, and like there's probably a couple major offenders that do that and so yeah. eliminating working that, your way back to yes them, I right? love I, and, and then so my argument would be that I bet you if you actually worked your way back to adding things like fruit and the vegetables that don't disagree with you, that you would actually feel even better than what you do on just being on a carnivore. That would be my argument. I, well, I'll say this, that the the true percentage of people that really do uh, need to eat that way to improve their health is a small percentage. The rest of them are simply not doing what you're saying, where they actually try to reintroduce and figure out what the real offenders are. There is a small percentage, though. Like Michaela Peterson's a good example. Mm -hmm. Like severe autoimmune issues. Um, and uh, she's very diligent. She's very in tune with what's going on. And I know I've known a couple people like this. Um, by the way, many times in those scenarios, not always, but many times in those scenarios, there's an underlying reason as to why foods are so triggering, why so many foods are so triggering. And when you solve that underlying issue, it's not a problem. Now, for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, um, the data is pretty damn clear that fiber um, has lots of health benefits. It's also up there with things that provide or produce satiety. Mm -hmm. Protein being at the top, fiber being pretty damn close. So if you start your day off with protein and fiber, then what you find is better eating habits throughout the day. And this this is doesn't matter what you eat for the rest of the day. If, the, if you start with protein and fiber, you're going to do better off than if you had not. So it's a great way to start the day. Well, don't you think too, like even people that uh, initially go into veganism, like they, it's the fiber that probably makes the most impact yeah, in terms of like what's been deficient in the It is diet. a lot of times, 100%. And, you know, like the opposite of that being carnivore, where it's like you don't have something that's triggering your autoimmune response, you know, so aggressively. And so it's like, it's funny because it, we get trapped there. Like this is, this is it. I'm an evangelist. This is my thing. Uh, when in fact, it's just highlighting something that was a deficiency. Now, there's the, the big barrier to what we just said, you know, start your day off with uh, high protein and fiber. The barrier for most people, this is for all day, but especially in the morning is time. It's always time. Oh my that's God, why, I get that's up That's why the move is the creature's a habit, dude. That's yeah. the creature's habit, oatmeal with a, and you could even add, Super easy add a half a cup or a cup of blueberries in there too. So that'll boost it even more. Yeah, because it's got a, one a cup of nitro cold brew. Yeah, because one serving, oh, let me see, if I pull up the ma if I pull up the macros of it. Uh, on what, on uh, creatures? Yeah, so I think Andrew sent, oh, here we go, I got it. So one packet of this oatmeal has 30 grams of protein, and nine grams of fiber. So, so you're one, getting one third of your fiber for the day, and and a nice shot of protein for the day. Yeah, right? and it's got adequate carbohydrates, so you get the fuel. It's got some fat in there, some healthy fats, and it's fast. Because I know that's an issue. People are like, oh my god, okay, protein, fiber. I got to cook, I got to prep, I got to make sure I have. That's an extra like twenty minutes in the morning. I got to get the kids ready or whatever. It's like not anymore. Now you throw some microwave, add water, milk, macadamia nut milk, almond milk. And then boom, you get that. And really it's about um, how it affects the rest of your day. It makes a huge difference when it comes to satiety that um, this, again, this was, like a, this was like a game changer for me. I would tell clients to hit these targets and start their day off this way. And then what I did, and this took me a long time to pay attention to, because I was so like, I'd be so focused on just like specifics. Then later on, I took this kind of broader view. Like, wow, when we start the day this way, the trend tends to look like this. Like, wait a minute, I wonder if this is what's causing it. And then I'd experiment with my clients. Hey, start your day off with this. Start your day off with that. And then I'd see like tr patterns. And man, you start off with protein and fiber, like the rest of the day would always look better than had they not. It's yeah. just one of those things. Oh, for like three years, that Managed was my- blood sugar, everything. Yep, yep. Staple yeah. meal. Yeah. All the, the oatmeal with protein, this was before Creatures of Habit, right? You'd make your own. That was it. I mean, every, every day. What would you do? You'd add berries? You'd have to add your nuts and seeds? Yeah, so I would do, I would do, my go-to was strawberry, walnuts, um, and then the scoop of whey in, in like your steel-cut oats or whatever. Yeah, 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 and yeah. that was the- 
that was the breakfast. I did that for too for every, every day. I for, did that for a while as well. And I'd mix up like, you know, some <laughs> banana and blueberry in there every once in a while just to get a, a change. And I could use like flaxseed or chia seeds in there. So that, have you that. tried making oatmeal cookies with the creatures of habit yet? I have not. Okay. I want to try that. Yeah. I want to try that because I just thought of that right protein now. Cookies. Protein cookies. Protein cookies. That sounds actually perfect. It does. I want, Okay, so nor, oh, anytime you try and do I don't know that. how to make cookies, by the way. So what else would we add? <laughs> well, <laughs> Maybe some almond eggs. flour? Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure. Eggs, almond flour, some yeah. butter, some salt. I mean, there's already salt. Maybe in a little. Bit. What would you think is the the potential challenge? Because a lot of times with the healthy Stop foods, baking. it like either doesn't rise right. Well, you or put does, some baking powder or something in there as well. Okay. I mean, I don't make cookies either, but you know that's more what about I, cooking than we do. I know that's that's my thought. You throw in a little bit. Pull of up a co- oh, some pull yeast. up an oatmeal cookie, just a traditional oatmeal cookie recipe, because I want to see and see what, if you can just straight pull out the. Yeah, because I would out the oats in there and just again. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about right now, but I'm thinking (laughs) of peanut butter oatmeal cookies. This is a challenge we're going to put out there. Mm. Send us who can send us the best creatures of habit cookie. Oh, I like that. Actually, Actually, I tell you what, I actually like that. I tell you what, different flavors. Who comes up with the most creative? Whoever comes, we'll give you a shout out on the show. I tell you what, come up with the best uh, flavor of oatmeal. Now, how are we going to judge this? I think they have to send the cookies. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can't wait unless they get to taste it. Ingredients and taste. So, what are they going to do? Who are they going to email? How are they going to get this uh, happening? Send it to our house or send it to over here. Send it to the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We want to give out the address because we're going to put other shit. No, no. We have our PO box. You just send it to that. You don't send it to actual. All right. That'll be in the show notes then. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Uh, Here's the giveaway for today. One of you will win free access to Maps Strong, but this is what you have to do to potentially win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that it's posted here on YouTube. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to Maps Strong. Now, we're also running a promotion on some of our best workout programs for those of you that are limited on time, space, and workout equipment. It's called the Time Crunch Bundle, and it's discounted heavily. Here's what's included. Maps 15 Minutes, Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime, and the ebook Eat for Performance. All of them together in this bundle, only $99.99. It's only happening this month. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below this video. All right, here comes the show. I like there you idea. go. All right. Speaking of delicious things and cookies and cakes and stuff like that, <laughs> Justin, <laughs> you have uh, you have been dethroned. I as the cake master. <laughs> what in in my bro Kyle? Have you guys seen? Is Kyle a minotaur. Lately? Yeah. <laughs> Kyle is a minotaur, bro. Half of Kyle. He's all glued. Is two of Justin's. Yeah. 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 yeah I I concede. I mean, I. I Honestly, like uh, I, I was actually watching the other day. Um, Did you have any by. ass envy when we first hired him? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. I will see. Here's the thing: Be like honest. I never thought of any of that. Like I, I, I remember growing like so through all all these sports. Um, so so like in high school, one of my friends, Augie, he was like the best athlete, like the most explosive athlete. And like, he had the biggest ass out of everybody. Right. <laughs> and I just recognized that. It was just one of those things. It was like an association you thing. And so, yeah, bro, you got yeah, I'm like, bro, it's gotta be all, you know, centered around the cakes. Like that has to be like a commonality thing. And so like, that was, it's funny. Cause like we, we start working together and all this, and then you kept making fun of me for the ass thing. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, and I never like associated that like with myself. And then, you know, here I'm like, Dude, walking around like looking, I'm like Kyle's got got some some girth to he that does, thing, man. Dude. Yeah, that <laughs> thing is is robust. Yeah, he, so yeah. he comes in in the morning. He's gonna be blushing editing this. <laughs> no, no, no. So he comes in the morning. He's, I mean, he's the kids. The kids young. He's fucking. He's a beast. But he came in yeah. this morning, and uh, he's always here. He'll get here before us. He does a cold dip. Does his workout. Then he usually balances. I come in, and then he'll come in. He'll do some editing, and every yeah. once in a while, I'll talk to him a little bit. And uh, I asked him, I'm like, hey, are, are, you know, are, are you trying Maps Anabolic Advanced? Yeah. He goes, yeah, dude, I'm on week two. So I'm like, oh, you know, because he follows our program. So I'm like, yeah. you know, give me some feedback. And he goes, I'm so glad you guys talked about on the on one of our previous episodes about going to failure and how at a certain point it's better to slow down the reps so that you don't get into that risk, that high risk factor with heavy weight. Mm. Because he was squatting to failure and he had to drop the weight because he's strong as shit. The kid will squat, you know, four plates. Yeah. So he's like, that's what he did. He slowed down his reps so he could fail within the rep range mm. without having to add more weight. Okay. So you know what originally brought this up, though, was this video. So this video kind of circulating of this guy that he was like running like a 40 
times oh, 40. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I see. The guy the big ass. He, huge ass. Like, and it From the front. It, it, but it looked, no. like, it looked like an Instagram model It looks ass. fake. It yeah. wasn't like a, like a he's dude like, that's- He's gone viral. He's like jacked. famous now. I forget his name. Yeah, he, I, I saw this. There was other videos with him, but it was just like, is this real? Like, I, like it's one of those things like, I, I got to know now. Yeah, okay, so here, this is it, true. It, you know who he's talking about, Andrew? Oh, you haven't seen that guy? White guy. And he's got and he's always running in like uh, khaki shorts. Everybody tags oh, yeah. me on his yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere, <laughs> like, I'm so <laughs> sick of it. <laughs> Stop tagging me on this guy. They think it's that you, guy and, and then the and then the cheerleader guy that like starts like dancing with all the cheerleaders like <laughs> randomly, like, this is you. I'm like, no, it's not. I swear to God. It's not that's me. Hilarious. Yeah, I seen uh the, he ran like the, they did it the combine and he did like the 40 yard dash and they compared him to like all these other really fast. Was he fast? Was he, fast? he was like moving. I mean, I mean he's, he's, he's 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 quick. Like four nine. Or something like that. Like it was, it was pretty fast. I don't even know what is considered right. fast. Yeah, What's I mean, I ran fast? like a four eight five, which was as fast as possible. There he is. Oh my god, slower. bro! Right wow, look at that thing. What is that? That's not real. I think it is. It. I think it actually. I don't know, <laughs> dude. It look. I mean, he looks like he's just dumped. He's got a diaper. Oh my god! Look at that bro. thing. I mean, either that or he like makes the effort to stuff his pants. No, I mean he's there's no a, dude would do that. On there's purpose. tons of video of him, and, and I mean he's owning it. He's wearing those short shorts, and it's like, come on, dude, bro. Hey, co hey, so this is true now. This is true fact. Uh, you guys know this, Justin. I'm sure you know this. You've kind of actually commented on it. <laughs> you, it. One commonality you could tell with people who are who can perform, like athletes, or just who are strong, is strong hips. Oh, yeah. it just is. Glutes and back. Glutes and back usually is what a commonality you'll see with athletes who can, yeah. can Real kick strong ass. obliques. Too. Yeah, obliques yeah. too. Yeah. They're like the most functional muscles. When you go back now, now when you analyze humans as primates, one of the big things that differentiates us from other primates is that we walk upright and we can run upright. Mm -hmm. And we have massive ass muscles compared to other primates. So you look, even gorillas. Gorillas are huge muscular animals. They have these tiny little butts. Yeah. And the reason why we have such big asses is because we walk upright and we run. They're they're functional muscles for what humans do. So it's like it's a very important muscle. And yeah. this is also why one of the reasons why both men and women are attracted to well-developed glutes. Even women, people don't, you know, girls don't comment on it, but when they actually right. break it down, oh, women girls. will say a man with a nice, yeah. like, like strong I mean, that's butt. That's never like their go-to until it's obvious to them. They're like, oh, you know, and then they'll point it out. Yeah. You know, if, if it must have happened. I feel like it is. They just don't say it out loud a lot because there's just not a lot of dudes with ass. Yeah. So that's it's just like. Probably true. Yeah, yeah, I think, I feel like it's like one of those things that like every chick wants it. But it's like you know, the, a lot of flat uh, ass dudes out yeah, there. Yeah, there's just a lot of flat ass dudes. So I it's mean, just like uh, step your game up sometimes. Dude. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He's, he makes good money. <laughs> Get on he's Kyle's got a pretty level. face. Yeah. He's got good arms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no ass though. Yeah, you know? the other body part is hands. Hands, uh, strong hands is uh, what women will typically mark. But those are the most functional things, right? Glutes and hands. Like that. That means you can. Yeah, you can. Do the good part is that you can mass. really develop them because of how, how what a role they play in all the exercises yeah. we talk about. I yeah. mean, you talk about squatting and deadlifting. I mean, you 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 build and just them. running and power and all that stuff. I mean, I had no ass as a kid. I was like, my you know, I used to have to wear a belt because my shit would just fall off my. my <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fucking well, bad. that's why you're, you're a swimmer, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. the one sport where having a big ass is a problem. Yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. want a big ass. Yeah, no, it was not not. not <laughs> good were were you the kid too that would wear a shirt underneath the um the the tank for for basketball? Oh yeah, totally. yeah, the jersey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, do that was the insecure. Bro, that's skinny the skinny. Kid. I'm Tiny a skinny kid too. Arms. Yeah. Oh, this guy still wears three t-shirts. <laughs> I still, come on, bro. <laughs> He's all fucking Jack. Still <laughs> fucking wearing three shirts. Like, wife beater every day. Hey, hey, I wear like, two shirts. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> two shirts and a wife beater. That's three shirts. Hey, the beater <laughs> is not actually not because of being it's, insecure. Like, the beater does not count as a shirt. It's a part of me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's this is a cultural it's thing. Basically tattooed on you. No, no. This is a cultural thing. Do you know how long it took me? Keep selling yourself. Do you know how long it took me to not wear a gold chain and to not wear. <laughs> Speedo underwear. Yeah. You know what? Listen, it took me to adulthood. Hey, I grew you know up what, that listen, way. Listening yeah. to you talk about your your excuse That's for funny. wife beater is like listening to Justin talk about his cheese issue. Mm. You guys are the same. You both are in so yeah. denial, so it's much denial. Of me, bro. But, yes, bro. There's nothing wrong with cheese. Hey, you dude. take away your ice cream. <laughs> take that back. You I'm in no you, denial. You hurts? I'm in no denial of that. <laughs> I'm in no, you and your I'm in no denial. How many times did you have ice cream last week? <laughs> no, and none last week. But oh, the okay. week before or two weeks before that, hey, there, I, I had like four I've times. Had, I've had ice cream three nights this week. Not dairy. I can't have dairy. I get the stupid. So No, we ordered from Baskin Robbins. It's so funny, too. I won't buy. That is rich ice cream. Listen, I won't buy ice cream. But I'll freaking DoorDash fifty dollars worth of three scoops of ice cream. I, <laughs> so I did this three nights this week. But Baskin Robbins has one flavor that doesn't have dairy, so I end up getting daiquiri ice every time. So I'm like daiquiri ice for uh, me. What do you guys want? Ugh. Still, 
Still, I don't know why. I've done I want to send times. the company that I I, f- I found over in um, when I lived out in Monterey that I'll send to you that is like all all natural that I like. I used to agree with me more than any other ice cream, so I'll send it to you. Yeah, you should try is, it. Is gelato like is that dairy based or yeah what? yeah uh, they only give it really it's honey they use to sweeten it. That's what uh, makes that's gelato. the difference of it. Yeah, that's also main, how it's churned. I yeah, believe. how it's yeah. churned. But what's in it? What makes so, gelato so different from ice cream is the honey. Have you got? You've uh, been to Italy, right? Yeah. No, not, not Italy. Not been, Italy. No, have no. you been to Italy? No. Never. Okay. I'm in Paris. I, I've always wanted to. Okay, so when you go to Italy, so Italy, uh, they make like they take gelato, uh, and it's like an art form. So if you go to these places, like ice cream places here are not. It's like little kids, and it's not like a place that everybody goes. But in Italy. They are like really nice and you look under the glass and there's like fruit on it and it's like an art. Like they make yeah. it a big deal on how they present it. It was like and, that in Paris. And create nice. it. It was yeah, like yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, it was like that. And it's like, and this is the thing you do at night at like midnight, summertime, everybody goes out at midnight and gets uh, ice cream. That was the first time I had experienced an affogato too. Oh. I'll never forget that. Oh, that was, yeah. They oh, served it in like, I got this, you know, big old, it was a, a cup of coffee like this big and then a, just a giant scoop. Did you eat the crepes over there? I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. When they make it on the little flat thing with the wooden, uh, whatever that thing is. A little, I like, you know, I like lighter sweet stuff. I mean, even my ice cream, I don't like, like Baskin Robbins is too rich. For oh, okay. Me. Yeah, yeah. I like stuff that's on the, like the lighter, the lighter sweet side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm yeah. a cheap candy person, so the more sugar, the better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. Swedish fish. I ordered in. And- Circus peanuts. So my son is into Toy Story right now. Uh-huh. So he's like watching Toy Story. Loves it. He likes. Uh, it's know. so funny the cycles of I know, like shows, funny? right? I know. Isn't it so, how weird how old that animation looks? It now? sucks. Yeah. I was looking at him like, man, it was this like is groundbreaking terrible. back in the day. Groundbreaking. But yeah. anyway, I bought uh, two. I don't know. I think I told you guys these two little Pez containers uh, because I found Woody and um, Buzz. Yeah. Lightyear. Yeah. A little Pez, but it came with Pez candy. And Pez candy has got to be the cheapest candy of all time. Oh, yeah. Who do you think ate the hell out of it? You did. This guy right here. <laughs> did any of you ever watch that documentary I told you to watch? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, the it. Pez It was one? good, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was oh, fascinating. It yeah. was really fascinating, right? Yeah. I, I thought it was a, like one of those ones I didn't think I was going to like as much as I did. I just am, my mind's blown that people are obsessing over yeah. yes. Pez dispensers. I didn't dispensers. know it was such I mean, a collectible no thing. Yeah. You know what that makes me re- realize when I see shit like that? People make millions of dollars off Pez and stuff like that. Like, how lucky are we... That we live in modern societies where we are, we have provided and created world for ourselves where we could obsess over stupid shit like that and become rich. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not food. It's not shelter. It's not clothing. And it's not innovation. It's toys. Well, and there's so much wealth that some dude become a millionaire because there's enough people with enough expendable well, income. What's to hilarious as- about that to me is always like what Gary V kind of brings up of like, if, if I don't have a job, like there's always ways to make money just going around uh, to like garage sales yeah. and, and like and finding these unique things like that. Like this guy just, you know, got into yeah. oh, like, wow, this is going to be a thing. And he was right. Like it's a thing. And like just collecting them and then turning that into its own business it's, yeah. it's just crazy to me there's you know uh ryan pineda who's a this real estate kid that i follow uh he got his big star he used to he was a uh um, professional baseball player for a small small window didn't get paid very much money and so to supplement his income the what kicked him off was uh he would buy cou- or he would get couches you know how people are always giving away couches on craig come pick yeah. it up you could have it yeah put it and on he, the he would go get these. He would go pick up either free ones or buy really cheap ones for fifteen hundred bucks. Sell them for a little more. Well, then he would turn around and like shank, get them cleaned, really, really nice, and then sell it for double, triple the price. Like just turn right around, around cleaning it, and made made big money doing really? that. Easy, easy. Wow. There's so many like little hustles like that. I had a buddy that he. That's yeah. all he did was Some hustle Craigslist. Really good at that, he yeah. would scour Craigslist every every day. And find things where people are just trying to get rid of it if they're willing to trade for something else. And he, I mean, and he stuck to things that he was like rims and car stuff that he was really into. And he would just, he would flip it, you know, and just make a few hundred bucks. You know I mean, you do enough of those transactions in a day and you're making a hundred something. But, and obviously, the bigger the thing, like he started getting into used cars too, where somebody would have like a used car they sell for $2,000, he'd throw some sick rims on it and double the price of what the the car would sell for just by putting some nice rims on wow. it like yeah. just, just keep reinvesting and then you, you get something a little larger item you can sell for more money and you just keep compounding on that yeah wow. there's a there's a you, you know it'd be really it's crazy when you think about like it's what we're talking about right now with the the craigslist flipping and like social all the social media businesses that exist i mean none of that was here yeah 20 20 25 years ago 
You I know, mean, think can, about how how yeah. and how much money you think is being, you know, yeah. made between that and all the gig economy stuff. You know, just ways to make money. I don't know, man. It's just, you know, the kids don't want to get jobs like they used yeah. to. I think they just get they just don't need to. I was having this conversation with my oldest. I'm like, you need to get a job. He's like, why? Everything's paid for. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It like, was. You're right. No, we had a conversation. I'm comfortable. We had a conversation about it. And oh, he's how's like, that? Okay, let me hear. And so he's like, oh well, I'm actually planning on getting a job. You know, whatever time he gave me the the date. And I said, okay. And then something came up. He needed money for it. He's going on this trip for school or whatever. So I gave him money. I said. This is the last time I give you money because you said you're going to get a job. After after that, then you're going to have to pay for yourself. So he, he when does he turn 18? Uh, July. This July? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, he's going to go off to college. So, yeah. like, I'm I'm curious to, like, how you guys will potentially handle that when you have an 18-year-old that, you know, may be living with you. You know, oh, like, yeah, do, yeah. You, do you charge for rent? Do you charge for utility stuff? Do you have some sort of a deal? You as know, long as you're doing this, then we'll, we'll pay for that. Like... Like yep. What's your guys' philosophy on having one of your kids potentially being in your home past 18 years old? How would you handle that? I, Doug, you're including this since you have a teenager it, too. It, for me, it depends on what they're doing. Like if yeah. you're if you're like high level education grinding mm -hmm. and you're getting like, you're crushing, then there's a trade-off. If you're not, then you got to pay, buddy. Right. Like you don't want to, you, you're going to go do this, you know, you're going to take school half ass and whatever. That's fine. You got to pay for certain things. So I think it's a trade off. So if he's going through college and, you know, maybe he even come, maybe he goes to Nevada. So he's going to get a job over there for sure. Okay. And so I, he's going to, I'm obviously paying for school, paying for the dorm. And then there's a minimum amount of, uh, like, there's a, a food credit that he'll get with that. Anything beyond that, he's going to have to pay for himself. So I'm not paying for anything else. So he's going to get a job to cover whatever else he wants or learn how to live very minimum, which I think there's something to learn off of that. Yeah. Both are as good, well. Are, are yeah. good things. But see, when I was a kid or when we were kids, you wanted to connect with your friends or hang out. You, you had to make some money. You couldn't stay at home, get online yeah. and whatever. You had to go get a job. You had to go drive. Plus, my parents couldn't buy me a car. They couldn't afford to get me anything. You couldn't take girls out on dates. You didn't have any money. No. Yeah. No, oh, you had to go you get, had to a, get job. a job. You had to get something. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty similar in that thought process in terms of if my kids are going to school and they're diligent about um, learning and, and, you know, for me to, to, to place them in that environment initially, you know, cover the cost of the school, but like any anything in excess to that in terms of like, you know, going out to, to restaurants, hanging out with their friends, like uh, their car and, and all that, like they're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah. You know, it, otherwise it's, it's you're on campus and, and you're stuck on campus. Like, as far as I'm concerned, like I had to figure my way out of that. Uh, and, and I actually like, here's the thing too, though. It was a bit of a distraction. Cause I'm like, I was so busy. I was between like football and then having, um, working at a restaurant and like I had zero time for interactions with friends. So I do feel like, you know, there's a bit of a trade there in terms of like, if, if, you know, what, what are they actually trying to get out of this? Are they trying to build relationships on top of also doing school? Like, yeah. and then, so, um, I think uh, I'm going to kind of put the pressure on them to figure that out yeah. uh, as opposed to me sort of infusing that. But um, definitely in terms of like them going to school, like I'm going to try my best to cover yeah. that. It's, it's interesting you bring that up because this was something that um, I had to make this decision when I was a senior in high school. And, you know, you guys all know my love for basketball um, and I didn't play my senior year. But I didn't play because yeah, I work. had a girlfriend and, and I wanted to take her on dates and I wanted a car and I wanted these things. And so um, I sacrificed playing a sport I absolutely love to be able to do those things because at that time in my life as a teenage boy, like that was starting to become a, a greater priority. You know, my girlfriend and going, being able to be able to go out with my friends if they want to go out to lunch. Like I wasn't getting any money from my parents. And so in order to do those things, I'd have to do that like that. And I wonder you know, would it have been better off or would I like what I would have got out? Like imagine like those three years of me working from high school into junior college and, uh, you know, my first like real, real job, like that was a full time work. Um, the lessons that I learned doing that and had I not done that and I got the luxury of maybe my parents paying for things. So I, so I could, you know, play basketball. Would, would I have been, I might've been able to look back and go like, Oh, I had more fun. Mm -hmm. You know, because I get to play basketball and hang out with my friends all the time. But then I would have really missed out on probably all the lessons and uh, that it's I learned. It's weird and, because there's always anomalies mm -hmm. too. Like you have such a good attitude. I think you would have done well no matter what. And then we know kids <clears throat> that work for us. I don't know if I want to say their name, but that grew up with super wealthy 
families, but going out doing startups, uh, became becoming quite successful themselves. So they had everything yeah. provided, yet they still produced. Then I know lazy shits that either grew up poor or rich, and they're just lazy and unproductive. Now, do you guys think that's more like just luck of the draw, genetics, or do you think that is like you know you're bringing it up, and I think you could bring shout out their names, like Enzo and Jordy Hayes, both are two kids that work for us. We got them as teenagers. Both grew up very privileged. Both, like yep. filthy rich. Like we have one of our kids who came to work the <laughs> first day as an intern and he rolls up in his Audi A6 and his Rolex watch. And he's like, he's like 17, 17, yeah, 17, 17 yeah, years old. 17 years old. <laughs> but he didn't floss that. Like I found no, that out. After, ass off. Yeah, I found that out yeah. after months of him working for us, like like looking down at his wrist one day going like, is that is that a Rolex you're wearing? And then seeing his car, and like he didn't brag about it. He didn't talk about it. He had a crazy work ethic. Like, so do you, do you just think that that was built in him? Do you think that's, do you attribute that to his father and his mother? I think it's both. Mm -hmm. I think it's both. I think there's, you think a little bit of it is just modeled and then also, yeah, yeah, as his own initiative. I'm sure he's trying to prove himself uh, on top that he can be successful. It's it's gotta be both. Cause the the rich kids that I, the the really, really rich kids that turn out shitty later on as adults that I, that I grew up with that I saw, it was the parents who the mother and father both worked really hard. They made a lot of money um, because they worked both really hard and they were, they, they basically paid for other people to raise their kids mm. because they, they just, they were constantly mm. working and they still, they loved their parents, but, and they had, and they had like, they didn't, they don't, I don't think they um, regretted them or anything like that, but because of that, they had a, a different view of money like almost like they didn't they didn't want it because they 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 lacked that like many of them would have their ambition was lower because they're like i i don't want to raise a kid and not spend any time with them and so they have this they have this thought of like oh if i chase those dreams like my parents did and try and make that much money it's going to take away from my relationship life's going to suffer yeah so then they like set the bar lower which you know so you have that Example, I and think, then you have like the Enzos who like, you know, who he was saying when he was like 17, I want to be a billionaire. Yeah, I guess the key is to raise him to have a good relationship with money, right? Because you can have a scarcity scarcity mindset and worship money and become wealthy, but also become depressed and anxious and unhappy or have a fear of money. I know a lot of people, um, I, I, I know someone in particular who grew up poor uh, without much, but the money was so demonized. That they thought that oh well being wealthy is bad it's evil yeah. and wealthy people are bad more, and so it's better money, not to more be problems that I, I still hear that it was you know some people like I've hung out with and I'm like it's a mindset yeah like, so it, there's it's there, not the money yeah so, so there's I, a bad relationship I, with money I think I the move is to to teach the kids delayed gratification um, living well below your means. And passive income, yeah. and, 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 like, and and understanding that because those like you don't need to go be filthy rich, but understand and those. taking value and pride in in in, in doing a good job yeah. because you'll see kids who will do like a job that they feel is beneath them. Oh, it's just you know I'm just flipping burgers or whatever. Like no no you have pride. You do something, take pride yeah. in it. And you do a good Whatever job. Whatever you're doing, own it. Yeah, you know, so I think well. that, that's another important thing. Yeah, it? no, no, I 100% uh, believe that for sure. I yeah. think uh, I think that you choose to to love these jobs. Like it's a choice that you make. Uh, not every job. I mean, every job I ever did, I had that attitude. It doesn't matter if I was shoveling shit and milking cows or mm-hmm. was doing something amazing like this. Like I always framed it that way like oh i like this and found ways to have fun with it or be competitive with it because i mean you got to do it so like why would you want to be negative about it because it just makes it that much worse like that attitude i guess something i took you know too with kind of your management style adam like even with my kids is like i want to reward them when i see glimmers of things that i really want in them to you know foster and, and to have them like really pursue more so like the, some of those things where they're like they're trying to be a little entrepreneurial and like oh i'm gonna come up with this idea and like they're trying to sell these little products to their friends and like so i all like contribute towards that just a bit so that way it kind of gets yeah. things going Bro, what yeah. what a great a great point and 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 i agree like so one of my all-time favorite books is one minute manager that you're referring to and it completely shifted my my philosophy around leadership and how i managed a team of people 
and 100% want to be that kind of father as, as I raise my son is to not be the dad who I'm there always to discipline and be the one to like, you know, drop the hammer on my kids, but the one who sees all the little things that he does well and right and make sure I celebrate those wins. And he sees how excited I get about him doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. That to me is so powerful to reinforce those behaviors than to be the dad who, you know, you work real hard, you're busy at work all the time, and then you come home, you drop the hammer because mom needs assistance with dropping mm -hmm. the hammer, and that's kind of your role versus, you know, I want to be, I want to know, like, what what our son did good today. What did he do good that was a good behavior that we want to foster and, and grow? And and I want to make sure that I do little things to, to either reward him or, or or show him that I appreciate that. You know, the other side of that too is is uh, balancing that with allowing them to feel the satisfaction themselves and not necessarily connect it always to making my parents happy. Yeah. Because what you what the, you also because that's also a balance. It's crazy, right? It's Raising balance. kids is all about balance. You can go too extreme either direction. Well, you want them to own it personally. Yes, because yeah. uh, uh, what you could do if it goes too extreme or you don't create balance with that is that that they live for making my parents happy. We know how that can turn out, right? right? Eventually, at some point, they're like, "Wait a minute, like, what do I like, and why am I doing this? And is it just for my parents? Is it just like what you know? What is my thing?" So there's a there's a balance there. That's why I think that, yeah. that's why I love the one minute manager philosophy, which is you know you you make a deal about it enough that they they make that connection of oh wow when I do but that, you my, don't over. Do it. But you don't yeah. you don't make it. Oh my God, this yeah. is it, son. This is what you yeah. like. You it doesn't need to be an hour talk. It yeah. doesn't need to be an yeah. or huge Dad ordeal. Loves it when you do this. It's like I'm not like you know putting myself in there. It's just like oh keep that. Yeah, up. it's a yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah. It's a simple like hey son. I heard you know yeah. I heard you helped your mom out with the trash today and stuff like that. Yeah. I want to tell you thank yeah. you. How'd that make you feel? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know oh, what I'm saying? you know like, I liked it. I liked it. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, good. it doesn't yeah. need to be. And I think that is the secret is to just and and that's a subconscious thing that's happening. I remember that connection. I remember having this conversation with my oldest where um you know, some of his friends were taking classes. Like they had the option of going with an AP class, like an advanced class versus a regular class. And they chose the regular class because they'd rather get an A than get a B. So like, mm -hmm. I'll take the easier class and get an A. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking my kid about that. So, well, how, how, like, how do you feel about that? Uh, and he goes, well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. You know, you want to get an A or whatever. And I said, do you, can you see like the other side of that? And he goes, well, I goes, he goes, I guess there's a lot of value in challenging yourself. Um, and then he asked me my opinion, and I said, "Well, personally, I think there's more value in getting a B in a class you stretch yourself in than getting an A in a class you don't stretch yourself in." So you know, it's 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 such a balancing act to to try to raise a kid that um, that has a good relationship with all these things because it could be so extreme in either direction. By the way, you're gonna fuck up. Like yeah. I messed up so many times. <laughs> that, yeah. Speaking of balancing act, this is a perfect segue, dude. The, the, the latest sport, okay, combat juggling. What? Yes. Wait a minute. Combat what? juggling. Combat juggling. Okay, this juggling cool. and running and like I guess you can like block the other guy from like catching it and like you have to like cross a line. But like what what else is there that they're gonna make extreme and make combat version Collins, of it? Can like, they hit each other? <laughs> yeah, they can hit each other. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> wow. and, the, and they have like three or four of these like pins that they're just like juggling in between and they're passing it to each other. And it I have, I have no idea like what the rules are. I was gonna are. say, what's the what's the goal? What's the desired outcome is to get across the like, I don't know. But wow, like, it's like on there, there's tele so many television. random sports. Bro, how much now? money they invest in this thing? 2000, 2014, it's been around that long. What? <laughs> <laughs> look, at the, look at these guys. And, and the guy's like hacking at them. I don't know if they can hit each other, though. No, it's, they, they, but you fun. can at least hit the pin, though. That's right? what it is. They can yeah. hit the pin. But, wow. but I've seen I've seen people take a pin to the face. You know face, what this though. is? This is going to sound bad. Yeah. But I, let me tell you what this is right here. This yeah. is nerds. <laughs> that are like, hey, let's create a sport that we're good at. Like they're tired of getting made fun of, yeah. you know, like for their juggling like, skills. Yeah. Oh, well, it's combat juggling. I don't uh, know, man. These sports are getting weird. Did you guys see the slap really league? Weird. You know, the slap league for men? Yeah. Did you guys see the one for women? Yeah, I shared it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, uh, that's the one I, the I, I can get behind that one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Can I tell you something, by the way? That's way more interesting. The thought that I had when I saw that is yeah. I said, what a wonderful example of how men and women are how we objectify ourselves for the for the enjoyment of other people. The yeah. men do it by showing how tough they are. Yeah. But obviously the outside people who aren't in that ego. The more space. violence, the, the more yeah. somebody gets hurt, the better. Yeah, you see how stupid it is. Like, the and then the women are like, sexy. let's sexualize it. Yeah. And that's yeah. how we're gonna do it. All of them trying to get attention. 
I mean, so, we're still an- it's so funny. We try and deny the fact that we're all just yeah, animals the other I day. Know. Hey, speaking <laughs> of which, I had this thought uh, today. Um, uh, God, my my little my little three month old baby. It's so crazy. She wakes up this. She always wakes up so happy, right? And she's putting us through hell because she's an infant. But she gives me this big smile and she's so excited. And I immediately forget all the yeah. shit that you know I go through, which is so illogical. But if you have kids, you know what it feels like. And so I'm thinking about you know raising kids and all this stuff. And I really, and I'm thinking, man, my wife really bears a brunt of the of the physical and mental challenges of of, of you know pregnancy and infant and having an infant, especially because you breastfeed. And I'm like, man, the the role of the man has always been to provide security. It's part of it, right? But what does security mean in a modern safe world? Like the world's pretty damn safe now. It's like security used to mean yeah. I made sure people didn't like steal shit and, you know, hurt us or whatever. And I thought, you know, security, I think what it means for modern world and modern safe world is that you're when you're when a mother is losing her shit because she's not sleeping, she feels like garbage or whatever, that dude is there and he's secure and solid and he lets her fall apart so she feels like she can. Mm. And I thought about this. What do you guys think about that? Hmm. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. It's dude. an interesting thought. It is an interesting thought. Um, because it, you know, because I feel like a lot of men today are like, "Well, what's my role?" Like, there's cops. There is confusion. Women make there. money. They can support themselves. Like, what do we do? Like, I mean, what, I, think, I still role? think it's 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 there's, the same thing. It's just the 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 medium has changed, or the 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 things that we have that we interact the imminent with. Imminent threats. Yeah, it's just different. Like, yeah. you're you know what an imminent threat is now? Your technology uh, that you have going on. If you that that the kids with the tech that we talk about. Uh, the ability to be able to to cover rent and food and all those I mean those still it's just different yeah. it's the same it's but the the need for you as a man to be able to provide and protect it's just a different thing it's not an imminent you're not a tiger you're gonna wrestle you know what I'm uh-huh. saying you don't gonna go out and do that but it doesn't mean you don't have to protect your kids from the internet of, of terrible yeah. T- yeah pedophiles and weird shit that yeah. like, so that I mean and let's be honest like but it's not like it used to be right like, well, like of course not it used to yeah. be like well uh Men are far well better suited to deal with uh, physical threats, obviously. But the threats now uh, women can handle for the most part just as well because we've made the world uh, so safe. You remember that that that, that um, speech in Fight Club where um, Tyler Durden or whatever is like, we have no war to fight. We have no whatever. Like, who are we? What are we doing? Uh-huh. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool speech. I don't remember it. It's been so long. I, I remember think, it was yeah. a good one, but I don't remember what exactly it was I think it's it been today. a transition for men to really kind of find that role and, and this is why traditional roles have sort of been there's like sort of gray there now mm-hmm. like a, a lot but i still think it's there i still think that um the closer we get to that like the more comfortable i think both parties are yeah. in that space and i it, i do think there's there's just because we're not in war right now you know, doesn't mean that's not on the table in the future. And like, well, here's what I mean. Preparing so, ourselves, you know, constantly for threats, I think is something to always no, no, consider. No, I 100 percent agree yeah. with you. But I'm, I mean, like, okay, so here's what I mean by that. Uh, it, it do a woman goes out with a guy, they're on a date. The guy, she's like, hey, tell me about your day, whatever. And he's like, emotional, breaking yeah. down, crying. This happened, that happened. She's gonna be like, this dude's unattractive. Oh yeah. Most women oh, would find that being emotionally, yeah, like like stable. Yeah, they want yeah, they want yeah. a guy that's in touch, but not like I gonna break down and shit. Like I want to yeah. know that you can hold your shit together. Yeah, no, I think when mo- the shit I, think, the fan. I think I think I think most women in would, a, would be yeah, sense. attracted to, to yeah. stoicism, someone who has a, a, a stoic character like that. I mean, I also think that's what I mean by security, right? Like they want security in yeah, the that sense, makes that, sense. I mean, I also think that that the, in some households that role is flipped, right? There's 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 men that have you know, more feminine traits. There's women that have more yeah, yeah, masculine traits. And so there's always, yeah, I'm speaking generally. I think that's the problem is that we, we, we want to jump all, if someone said like this conversation you're having right now is like, you have to tiptoe around how you say things. Cause you, you so you yeah. don't come off sexist, but it's like, well, there's always an exception to the rule. And like, you know, for the most part, I think that the you're you're there to pr- you know protect and provide. I mean that's the the main reason why you're there. And part of you know protecting and providing providing could uh, you know umbrella what you're saying. So I don't I don't necessarily disagree uh, with that. I mean I just think for me and my house like I I, I mean I want to be the leader of of our house. Like I want to be the one. The, even though together we co-parent together we we co make decisions. But at the end of the day, if we fail, if we get if we lose our home, if we make a bad decision. 
I take full responsibility, sure. regardless of my wife and I had a discussion about it. Like as the leader of our home, like I take the brunt of any bad decision that we make because I lead the household, whether you incorporate how much you incorporate your wife in that conversation or not, I think is irrelevant. I think at the end of the day, and I think that is our, our job and that falls under the guise of protecting the family is that everything is your fault. So when shit goes wrong, it's not my wife's fault. It's, it's my fault. It's my fault as the leader of this family. And so I, I view it like that mm. as far as like how I want to run my household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I also think that's unique to every person too. Like everybody runs and just like- Yeah, you, this is all generalities, of yeah. course. This is total generalities that we're, we're it, talking. I was just thinking of, uh, and I don't know how to present this without it sounding funny, but uh, like sometimes Courtney and I wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And no. she's always like, "Oh my god!" Like yeah. you would kill me. And it was. It's not like I'm. I'm. It's nothing rough. <laughs> I had anything. this conversation with Jessica. You know, like it's. It's just one of those things where I'm not like I don't. I don't throttle down, or I don't like. I'm very <laughs> cognizant of the fact that like I. I have to always be gentle. You know, like I'm just always breaking shit. Right. Yeah. I'm always like you know, um, all over the place. But I'm. I, I try really hard to be gentle and and. And, uh, you know, not present myself as this bruising fucking bull that like in a China shop. No, Jessica, Jessica did, and I did this a while ago. I said, hey, let's imagine that like I passed out and you have to like save me. And I just laid yeah. down. I said, see if you could move me. And yeah. She's strong. Jessica's strong. Yeah. But she's like, oh, my God, this sucks. <laughs> and then I laid on her and I yeah. just said, I'm going to be dead weight. Let's see if you can get up. And she's like trying she to move. Just, yeah. Well, she just realized <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, I, I could not even move you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm going like 60%, you know, like, and, and so it's just one of those things. I think it's perspective sometimes, yeah. you know, cause like there are threats out there, you know, there's threats of, of, you, you know, anyways, the, it's there. <laughs> hey, but I will say this though, you, if, if the, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've seen this situation, this with your kids, if your kids are threatened, you ever seen mama bear come out fearless. Oh yeah. Scary. Oh yeah. Fearless. It's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. It's pretty funny to see. Uh, I love seeing that real side. It's I love seeing that come it's out. It's attractive, so like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Get them. I mean, I, I, I also think like the, the, I mean, the way we manage our household is like uh, the way a good coach, I think, manages a good team, right? Like there's certain, there's certain aspects in our relationship and both, by the way. You Katrina, identify them, right? Right. Like yeah. Katrina, there's some, there, Katrina has some masculine traits. I have some feminine traits and there's things that, you know, traditionally one would do. The way you sit to pee. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a true story, by the way. <laughs> He's got to balance it out. Okay. So you know, she, stand she doesn't stand to pee. Put so. your leg so that's just something we have to kill you. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, and, and there's times, right? So when we we have a little bit of of, of challenge of kind of pushing and pulling on, you know, uh, who this, who that, who yeah. should have done whatever. And what I always uh, distill it down to is like, hey, let's listen. You and I are on the same team. This is not a like, you, I I care if you're better than me at this or vice versa. It's like let's agree that. When it comes to okay, uh, you know, saving money, investing money, uh, uh, working and 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 getting money. Uh, when it comes to raising our child, when it comes to having hard conversations with the the school teacher, when it, I mean, there's all these things that together we have to tackle. And then the goal is not like, oh, I did this this time, so now you go do that. It's more like, hey, what are you really good at, and what am I really good at? And there's some things that we we share that we're both kind of good at. That's just smart. Yeah, and and yeah. so let let's let's do it that way. I mean, that she handles. Yeah, imagine if things were flipped, right? Like. Imagine if, like, I was in, like, in charge of organizing anything yeah. at home. <laughs> it would be, but I go home and there's like uh, everything has a place and there's labels and there's jars for things and that, that and then she makes the playroom and it looks so aesthetic and everything's all wonderful. I'm like, man, this is great because if it was me, yeah. this would be a pile of. Shit I also right. love to Strengths. like. I, I think it's great when you've when in a relationship when you've kind of established uh, those roles and who's better at what, and then you dip into their role every once in a while. I think that's like. So like so last, you understand yeah, 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 and then also a, like gives you appreciation. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it? I mean Katrina handles so much of the, uh, you know, the raising of our son and the and the every the nights feeding everything right. And I every once in a while get to involve myself. One, it makes me appreciate her, and then two, I get to see the rewards that she gets of that. Like she, I mean, she gets all the cuddling and love stuff that I don't get so much because she's put all that work and time into with him every single night. Right. Every once in a while, I get like last night it was so great, and <laughs> my son. And he he got up out of bed, which he doesn't normally do when we're you know we're downstairs. It's like I don't know nine ten o'clock. If he gets up out of bed, it's normally like two three in the morning or whatever. And he got up like right after we were up. We were downstairs watching TV, and I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll go get him. And so I I get up 
and uh, it can, I'm going up the stairs and you can hear his feet pitter pattering through the, the hallway looking for us or like that. And I haven't even got all of the stairs and he's going, daddy, daddy. And I come up, his hair's all disheveled and stuff mm. like that. I said, Hey son, it's, it's time for bed. He goes, yeah. And he goes over and he grabs my head. Will you cuddle me? Oh, <laughs> of course I'll cuddle you. Oh. <laughs> of course I'll cuddle you. I've been you. getting up in yeah. the night to, with the, Aurelius is having a tough time with sleep right now. And Jessica's got the baby. So I have, I'll, I'll have the monitor. So I've been getting up in the middle of the night to comfort him. And it's, he told, uh, he was telling Jessica now the past couple nights, mama, Baba comes and hugs me at night. Oh, I love him. I'm like, oh, <laughs> wow. Although, yeah. Sucks having to wake up in the middle of the night to, to do that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> come on, kid, go back to sleep. Yeah. I'm tired. I don't want to do this. Got a podcast tomorrow. Anyway, is he a good sleeper? How does he does he sleep through the night most Norm times? Yeah, normally, but he's going through a. I think he's going through. You know, kids go through phases. Yeah, right? they go through those. Yeah. Loops. So Every what he's been go doing is deep. he's been getting up. He like he'll kind of I'll hear him on the monitor, kind of like whimper and start to get a little louder. So then what I do is I go in there and I rub his back and I go, hey, you, do you want to have good dreams? And he'll go, okay. And then he loves cars. Not, not the cartoon, like literal cars. Yeah. So say, I want you to dream about really fast cars. And he goes, ha, 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 okay, okay. And so then I'll paint the story, like you're in a car, it's really fast, it's blue, because that's his favorite color, and you're nice. racing everybody. Oh, okay, okay. And I'll put the covers on him and leave, and it works every time. Oh my God, you just reminded <laughs> me. So, have I told you guys about like how, uh, so like part of our, like st we storytell, right? So we read to him a couple books, and then the last thing we do is we tell a, like a freestyle story. Like mm -hmm. I just tell a story. I think you do mm -hmm. this with your kids, right? We make, oh, yeah. make it all yeah. up. That's all I used to do. And so, uh, I, I do that most of the time. So I love telling, like making up like this crazy story. I do the same thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I love, he loves it, huh? I, I love doing it. He absolutely loves it. Katrina is like, she doesn't have the same skill. Like she doesn't make the noises. Same with Courtney. She, she doesn't have this like creative. Wait a minute. Is this a man thing? I don't it's know. The same in my it house. might be. Yeah. And so the whole, the, here's the hilarious part though. So like, of course, like there's time. So he wants that every single night. There's times yeah. where I'm not obviously doing it and she's doing it. And, uh, and she's all, we're always talking about like how I tell her, like how I tell the stories, right? So I try to always tie some moral into it. There's always like some crazy big red balloon or big ship that magical and does all the <laughs> stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I really get into it, right? And, it's, and I, 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 get, thing, I can only like... get him to fall asleep during it, right? Yeah. So Katrina tells me the night, she's like, this little shit, you know what he says to me the other day? And it, she goes, because she's like, she knows she struggles with it. Or he'll, after she tells the story, she does it like quick. And he's like, mommy, another one. No, no, not that. Make my, and he's like coaching <laughs> yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. Right? Make so it the, funny. So she's like, <laughs> like, you know, I've been, she's like, I've been trying to do, you know, the, the more bigger stories and, and take some of the stuff you've talked about. So, that, and she goes, you know, he says to me uh, last night, like after I tell him a story, good job, mommy. No. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. She's like, this patronizing. little shit. Like he's literally like judging my freaking storytelling <laughs> skills right now. He's, I was like, hey, oh God. Your so stories have oh, morals. Man. My stories always make me look like a champion. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, dad, like, like dad yeah, looks awesome. Dad's the hero, along, dude, and he grabs saves the bear. everybody's oh, life. It's so funny. He <laughs> grabs the bear, and the bear was so strong. Of course, the bear was stronger, and he throws the bear. Oh, and he gets so God. excited. He starts laughing. He gets all pumped up. Mine like, always has oh, like yeah, yeah, mine like always has like de a, a delayed gratification moral yeah. or work You're ethic. Than I have. Work <laughs> ethic. Mine's all about making Yeah, I always build it around that like sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Mine's all about the dialogue and with different voices for everybody and making it as hilarious as possible. How funny is that? How so, we all you know what we need to do? We need to get the kids together yeah. and we need to all take turns telling, telling a story. story. Yes, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell funny. scary stories. My, my, our, your, our kids are too young, but your boys would like my scary oh, yeah. shit. I'll make dude, them jump out it. of their chairs, dude. <laughs> it's, it's a good time. <laughs> anyway, we'll sleep for a few days, but you know. Anyway, we're supposed to talk about Organifi, but before we do, I want to ask you guys, have you guys ever taken, this is a banned supplement now, so it's now illegal, okay? But it was present in pre-workouts in the past. It's called DMAA. Have you heard of this before? Is that the dynamite one? No, no, that's not the dynamite. <laughs> DMA. What is that one? You know it's what I'm talking about, right? I do. Uh, DNP. Oh. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no. so I'm not far off. I no, knew, no, no. I knew so it was one of those acronyms. It starts with a D. Yeah. No, DMAA was present in a classic pre-workout that had this cult following called Jacked. Do you guys remember this? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Jacked 3D, right? Did you ever take that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you did? I yeah. never took it. I saw so it. So what was the deal with it? it just, I mean, just felt amazing. Okay. Yeah. So this particular comp, which is now illegal, it's chemically similar to ephedra and adrenaline. And apparently people will take it wow. to party or whatever. And I, I asked people in the forum, I've never used it before. So I'm like, what does this feel like? And some yeah. guy's like, oh, co cocaine. Feels like cocaine. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Anyway, uh, yeah. So long story short, I found some online. So I'm going to try it out. But oh my God. it's banned. You're not supposed to be able to buy it, whatever, and the whole deal. But this made me think about pre-workouts in general. 
And the best pre-workouts for anybody who's interested, if you want to make your own or you want to find the best pre-workout, it's not the one that gives you the most stimulants. It's the one that knows how to balance calm uh, compounds with stimulating compounds. Yeah. Because if you're over hyped, your breathing's going to be shallow. Yeah. You're going to get exhausted. You want it drawn out so you actually can use energy for longer. Right? Yeah, yeah, you want calm focus. Yeah. You don't want shaky, jittery, losing your mind type of energy. You want that balance. So what the did they, what like compounds did they use in the Organifi peak power that you created? Oh, what yeah. was it? What was it that you used to calm? Oh, because I know you, you didn't use heavy stimulants. I knew, and I know caffeine you dosed is the, main the stimulant. I know, I know you dosed the caffeine even moderate so you could scale it up if you wanted to by Doug, scoop. Doug, pull up the ingredients so we can in, in pull it did up. Did you use something like theanine? Is that, did you use that? Yeah. We there? used, uh, we used compounds that contain things like theanine. Okay. Uh, there's other compounds. Some so, adaptogens. Yes. So there's the caffeine that's in there, but then there's other compounds that are designed to balance, uh, balance out that that stimulant effect of the caffeine. So, Doug, if you can expand on that a little bit. Oh, like so lion's mane. Lion's mane. So you is got in, lion's mane in there to do that. Yes, 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 yes. So you got bacopa leaf extract, lion's mane, What's bacopa leaf used for? Uh, bacopa increases uh, blood flow to the brain and has oh. been known to be a cognitive booster. Neurofactors, which is really interesting, which is also in there, boosts BDNF in the brain. BDNF. Pretty significantly. So the the whole thing with, in, in, by the way, it's an expensive pre-workout. People are like, why is it so expensive? Because we pulled no, when I helped them put it together, I'm like, I don't want to pull any. Yeah, any we didn't, you didn't yeah. build it for pricing at all. No, I'm like, yeah. I want it to be the best. That's the most effective ingredients we can just smash in. And I want to source the best. I want efficacious doses. And I want people to feel what I try to aim for, which is that euphoric, calm focus when they work out. So that's what you want in a pre-workout is you want balance. You don't want overstimulation. That'll actually reduce your performance or make you feel like shit, or you'll get what that crash post-workout that people talk about with uh, overstimulated uh, type pre-workouts where they work out, then an hour later, they're like, I feel like shit and I'm irritable. So anyway, and then reading about DMAA, which I've never tried, which I will because, I, like I said, I ordered it because I'm, I have, oh, I, I'm I a bit of a fanatic, um, supposedly creates a terrible crash as well. But I'll report back on my experimentation. Let people know what that feels like. So uh, I don't know if you guys have a shout out. I'll let you do because I did the last one. Um, I have a shout out. I feel like I'm maybe late to the party a little bit, but, and this is kind of a fun one. It's not really like, you know, you're going to get a bunch of great fitness science or something from this person. But I just found this guy, Harry Mack, who is for sure one of the most talented freestyle rappers I've ever seen in my life. Oh, you're like crushing on this guy. You were showing us. <laughs> oh, I, I tell you what, no, real talk. I told Justin this you before you came like in today. a regular today. guy. I cannot remember the last time that something, I found someone or something, somebody's content that I like went down the rabbit hole where like, you know, it was like, Last night, Katrina's like, what are you watching? And I'm like, I can't stop watching this guy's stuff because he's so damn talented. I'm waiting for him to like suck. He freestyles with shit yeah. people throw at him in, in real time. I saw. I, I watched a few of those when she brought that up. Um, does he have like an actual album or is this all he does is like just like so no, he'll So he does even live stuff, right? So he'll go and he's been on Ellen. He's been on Sway. He's oh, been okay. on. So I can't. So I'm obviously probably late to the party for like, yeah, he's been around for uh, a while. Yeah, I'm sure. So I, but I've just now found him and I've shared him with some of my family and friends that didn't know who he was, but he's, so he goes and he does live concerts, but he, and he still does the same thing where he makes people just throw shit out of my crazy and he off the cuff. Wow. That's he, crazy. He builds it into these He's rods. He's got a totally different wiring of his brain. Oh, to man. It's a talent. It's unbelievably talented. He'll do it, right? So his thing, so I didn't even know what Omegle was until you guys kind of uh, told yeah. me what that was all, this whole, like, um, it reminds me of, like, AOL chat rooms when we were Except younger. with video. But with video, yeah. right? It's kind of same concept. You can just mm -hmm. you start chatting it up like with some random people. All around the world, yeah. Yeah, randomly. and so he does that, but he's he spits these rhymes to people, and then he asks them, to give me like three or four random words. And most people try and like stump them by giving them like weird, crazy stuff. And then he not only busts the rhyme and yeah. builds it into the, the rap, but then the people are like, oh my God, they're going crazy. And he starts rhyming about the stuff that is in their house or on their hat or on their sweater. It's like- It's all three words. I'm not wearing, ooh, forwards, pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dang. No, super talented. He does so, a good job. Entertaining. Hey, check this out. Do you want to relieve pain and stiffness in your body? Do you like to use the foam roller but getting on the floor is a pain in the butt? Well, check this out. There's a company called Mobility Wall that lets you utilize the benefits of a foam roller, but you stand. It actually goes in your doorway and allows you to hit hard-to-reach areas of your body so you can improve your mobility 
improve your range of motion, thus improving the effectiveness of your workouts. Go check them out. Go to mobilitywall.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get a fat 20% off uh, at checkout. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Svet Bana. Is there any point trying to build muscle after 40 or at this point should be focusing more on maintenance, being leaner and longevity? Okay, so let's let's correct this here for a second. Yeah. There is no such thing as just maintaining muscle. Uh, your body is either breaking it down or it's building it. The illusion of maintenance is when breakdown and building tend to be balanced out. Yeah, so they you look like flow. You, right, so you look like you're kind of the same all the time. But muscles either are breaking down or building. There's no such thing as just stagnant. It just stay there, stays there. There's also the myth. You know what's funny about that? It's the same in business. That's true. A yep. business is never just cruising just maintaining. or maintaining. Growing You're or always growing or dying. There's no, Yeah, there's no such thing as a snapshot of your body. Let's just maintain that. It doesn't work that way. Um, there's also the myth that longevity is different than trying to build muscle. Now, there's definitely extreme when it comes to building muscle. So you can push it to the extreme where you sacrifice Longevity, but for most average people, so we're talking about the average person, not like a bodybuilder, fitness fanatic, or whatever. Building muscle is one of the best things you could do to improve longevity. It's one of the best things you could do to improve insulin sensitivity. It's one of the best things you could do to maintain mobility and function, maintain a metabolism, which is a buffer against uh, eating a diet in a modern world, which tends to be high in calories. Um, it's a one of the best ways to maintain normal, natural, healthy yeah. hormone levels. So um, the goal for, for, for the average person who's working out a few days a week in the gym, not talking extreme here, should be to build muscle when you're in the gym. So just go ahead and try and build muscle and you'll achieve the things that you're asking about. And this, this whole like after 40 thing, you never, your body never loses the ability to adapt except for when you die. So it can always get stronger. It can always, you know, of course there's a limit, but I train people in their 70s and 80s for a long time. And uh, I would double and triple the strength because they were sedentary and then they started doing strength. Yeah, that's training. why the pursuit for building muscle is always going to be there. You got to always have that top of mind because like, how are you going to um, maintain, even just maintaining or progressing movement, like everything in terms of everyday average movement of just getting up and out of your chair, um, you know, being able to pick things up from the ground that are, are somewhat heavy and awkward. And like, you need to be equipped, uh, going for, you know, forward until your, your golden age. So it's, it's one of those things you always have to like be conscious of like, how can I, uh, continuously pursue building muscle? Because that's my only insurance I have now. We are giving a, a, a broad general answer on something that I would want uh, I would want to see this person or know this person to give more specific advice, meaning like let's say, I mean, if I was advising one of you guys, let's say you guys hired me as a as a client and you didn't have all this great trainer knowledge or whatever that, right? And you and I'm talking to you and I, even though the the truth is everything everybody said is true about you're either building muscle or losing muscle. I would be encouraging you to shift your focus towards longevity, uh, being leaner, oh, yeah. being, if you, if being you, more mobile, and saying. like, and so because I know that you've you guys have established such a solid foundation of good muscle that trying to stretch you to build more muscle and that even being a focus will be sacrificed. Yeah, you yeah. could you guys could afford to lose twenty pounds mm -hmm. of muscle and still be incredibly strong and fit. And so I would be so I don't know what this person looks like, how long they've been lifting how much of a great muscular yeah. base they've built and do they neglect things like mobility and cardiovascular endurance and stuff like that and so from that perspective yeah i might have i might have the conversation might sound different the, the rules the, the laws still apply that you guys are saying right. but then the way i i communicate it to this person would be different because i'm going okay well, this person has got a lot of muscle already. And so, you know, I don't want you to really focus on that. I want you to focus more on these things because I think that's going like to benefit ben you. Pikulski, who just uh, right. realizes like carrying all this mass is actually great example. Know, something that yeah, but uh, you're, 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 you're talking about like such a small yeah. well, that's, that's, I well, use that's you, I use you guys because you guys aren't quite as extreme <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> example. That well, even us, we're, we're, we're but I mean, there's outliers like that. Yeah. So it, it is worth talking. Yeah, about. but the average person. When I say average, I mean like 95% or more uh, building muscle or the pursuit of building muscle is one of the best things you could do for longevity. 
if you're already jacked and you've been pursuing building muscle for the last 20 years, uh, then, uh, then, then it's more individualized, right? Then, then look at yourself, look at what you're sacrificing potentially for me to build any more muscle. I'd be sacrificing. I sacrifice longevity now in the pursuit of strength and muscle, because that's my, my passion. It's, you know, call it, call it what you will, my addiction. But, uh, for 95% plus, uh, if I, you put 10 people in front of me, almost all of them or all of them, I'm going to look at them and be like, Hey, let's build muscle. That's what's going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of. Well, yeah. Especially when you say like, if you're talking general pop, because we're yep. including the, mm. the, the, yeah. If this was like the bodybuilding community, but I mean, I, well, I mean, now. even not, it doesn't have to be a bodybuilding community. I mean, we, I think I like to think that, uh, we have a large audience of people that are fitness enthusiasts. Maybe they're not trainers or yeah. bodybuilders, but you know, they listen to this podcast for hours on uh, every week. And so they're fitness enthusiasts and they may, maybe some of them have been trained. They're, this person's 40. Maybe they've been right. training for 20 years of their life. Well, it's more nuanced then, right? And yeah. And, and yeah. built a lot of muscle then. And, and so maybe, cause what I don't want to tell this person is maybe, they're getting this like kind of bell that's ringing telling them like you know i probably should focus on just kind of leaning out and maybe doing some more cardio and focusing on sure. longevity and health sure, sure. because i've been you know hammering the weights for I've 30 power lifting yeah tower, really 20 living, years of my life i've been focused on building lots of muscle i mean I, and i say that because this this is my current place in my life kind of like my journey like i've I've built a lot of muscle in 20 years of lifting. And so my focus is more longevity. Now that doesn't mean that in that pursuit, muscle doesn't get built and lost and does the ebb and flow of what yeah. you were alluding to. But I, when I think about what I'm trying to do overall, I'm considering things like how are my, how's my mobility and how's my ability to rotate. And, right. you know, did, did the getting on the elliptical for 20 minutes practically kill me? Like I needed, you know what I'm saying? So like I'm factoring that in, I'm not just thinking about building muscle, just building muscle. So, right, right. Because I need to shift my focus. Right, but yeah. the reason why it's like for the average person, this is so important. Important is the average person is doing zero right. exercise. Mm -hmm. Right, and the average person will maybe get two or three days a week of consistent exercise. And within those two, three days a week, what should they focus on that'll give them the most bang for their buck? Building muscle. Next question is from Talha K seventy four. What is the difference between seated versus standing calf raises? I don't have a seated machine in my gym. Are we splitting hairs or is it a big no, difference? big difference. Yeah, yeah so for, for functionality, muscles. you're fine. But for, for complete muscle development and for enhanced functionality, it's a big difference. But you have to understand the the anatomy of the of the calf to make for this to make sense. When you look at the calf muscle, you have the big, meaty, gastronomious uh, side of the calf. And then you have the soleus, which is this flat muscle that lays underneath. And they one is far more active the big meaty part is far more active in a standing calf raise. And the other, the soleus, is far more active in a seated calf raise. So they're both different and both valuable. So a complete calf routine would include both standing and seated calf raise. Now, for the average person who just wants to strengthen ankle flexion, um, you know, lots of walking, standing calf raises, jump rope, that kind of stuff. You're going to be totally uh, fine, but you, know, you want to develop, you know, the, the musculature of the calves and have a lot of balance. You definitely, you definitely want to do both. They're, they they hit they're different, different muscles. Types of, yeah, I mean it's different. I mean it's to me it's like and this this will be a little more of an extreme analogy to get the point across, but it's like choosing one exercise for your back. You say back, yeah. and the back isn't one muscle. It's, it's a, a bunch of different yeah. muscles that have, uh, you know, different planes of motion that they move in, and different ways that it activates your back. So. The same concept goes with your calves. Like the calf is like a, a general statement of the calf, but there's two muscles in there that have different actions that they're responsible for. So targeting both of them, yeah, just like giving you a – like you could do one, a row, and the row hits the back nicely and somewhat incorporates everything, but there's so many individual muscles of the back that you probably want to target those. I would make the same case for, yeah. the, for the calf. Yeah, you know what's interesting too about the calf is the, the I think the soleus, if I'm not mistaken, is the muscle in the body that has the highest ratio of uh, endurance type muscle fibers to strength sure. type muscle fibers. So I think when they analyze the whole body, we all generally genetically will have more fast twitch muscle fibers or slow twitch muscle fibers, fast twitch being the ones that are explosive and powerful, slow twitch being the one that creates stamina and endurance. Fast twitch muscle fibers develop and grow more than the slow twitch ones. And uh, without getting into the weeds, because you can definitely get fast twitch to act more like slow twitch and vice versa through your training, that when they go through and break down muscles of the body, 
they can see like, oh, these muscles tend to have more explosive fast twitch muscle fibers in relation to the rest of the body or more slow twitch. The soleus is, I think, the highest concentration in terms of skeletal muscle, one of the highest concentration of slow twitch muscle fibers. But it makes sense because you're walking or running or whatever. I mean, you're using that muscle probably more than than other muscles. Um, so that is true. And because of that, there's been a mistake around how to train the calves for a very long time. And I remember falling into this trap because they have this, uh, you know, greater capacity to handle way more volume. We would do all this like 20 reps and superset triset, yeah. like talk and just like burn. They can handle so Lots much volume. Yeah. Ver and when my calves grew the most was actually when I trained them like five by five, yeah. I never, I didn't do that for my first 10 plus years of calf training and training in general, because I, I knew that about the yeah. fast switch, slow twitch fibers and what, and how much the, the calves, like the abs can handle that, which is also a mistake that people make with abs is they do such high reps all the time and they neglect. Yeah, it doesn't change the fact that the fast switch ones grow more. Right. Anyway. Right, right. So don't don't neglect heavy weight training for the calves. Full range of motion still. Don't do the little cheat little pumping reps, but. It's got to be the one muscle mo that nobody does full range of motion. Uh, you ever watch anybody do calf raises anywhere? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. almost always choppy range of motion. Yeah. Full range of motion. Full stretch, full squeeze. That's the best way. Next question is the from the Matthew Holcomb. I've been seeing a lot of growing popularity with zercher squats and deadlifts. Is there a benefit to those over traditional squats or deadlifts? I'd like can to, we take credit for that? I would like to say uh, yes. <laughs> can I was we, just going to say that. For that? I mean, I want to. When we in. first started talking about the, now we didn't invent those. Those are old. No, episodes. no, no. It's been around for a long time, but nobody but was doing them. We've definitely uh, brought them into our programming, and I think that not a lot of people were. So we were highlighting them as a very beneficial exercise that people should pursue. Yeah, so Zerter I don't know anybody, okay, and I'm sure there's somebody, but I don't know anybody in the fitness space that is not a strong man or power lifter person that well, power like, lifters that, didn't do it. It was only strong men. Yeah. Strong, strong men, men that are incorporating that. Yeah. Like, I don't, they, in their programming, like mm -hmm. all the you know, fitness For influence, physique development. Yeah. Nothing. All no your way. fitness influencers that are out there. I don't know anybody that has, has uh, incorporated those into their program. So the, for people who don't know, these are lifts where think of a squat, but you're holding the barbell in the crook of your elbow. So your arms are mm -hmm. bent. And so you think, why would you want to do that? Super uncomfortable. Yeah. Why would you want to do that? when you can hold it with your hands or you can put the weight on your back, it's uncomfortable, the whole deal. And I, I do, I would like to take credit because when we talked about these lifts for physique development, nobody was doing these at all. And now lots of people seem to be doing them. We have them programmed in some of our workouts. Definitely Map Strong has them. Mm -hmm. So what's, why? Why do these for phys physique development? Okay, we talk about full range of motion training all the time. We talk about how muscles stabilize. And you know if you're in an isometric contraction, there's a little carryover to outside of the, range of motion that the muscle's holding, but most of the strength is in that range of motion. When I'm doing a zercher deadlift or a squat, I'm simulating what's known as rounded back lifting. Mm -hmm. My scapula, not rounded low back, okay, but my upper back, my scapula has to spread a little bit for me to support the weight. So what you'll find is your muscles will get sore differently. Now the value in the real world is massive. When you're yeah. holding things, when you're hugging things and lifting things, you you're are rounded back. loading, yeah, yep. here with the rounded back position. It's very much more of a functional lift that you would encounter in real life. Yes, and I found doing this really developed my back to a whole nother level. So it's a different exercise. Even though they're called squats and deadlifts, a zercher squat is very different than a traditional squat. A zercher deadlift is very different from a traditional deadlift. Now it is a very uncomfortable lift, uh, but and it takes time to get used to. Like a barbell squat takes someone a long time to get used to the positioning. Yeah, Holding a barbell in the crook of your arm, you have to get used to being able to do it. I found it really highlights core strength. Like yes. It, it, so it's it's one of those sort of, it'll make or break you uh, initially when you when you start to learn how to do them properly. But like to, to expose um, like posterior and anterior chain at the same time, I think too, it's one of those lifts that has that unique kind of value where you do feel a lot of benefit on both at totally. the same time. So along those lines, I'll sell this even harder because I remember introducing this into my lifts and kind of feeling like, oh, this is, you know, why am I doing this? And feeling it's feeling so sore in my core. So when I started to, to, to squat a lot more frequently, I started to, you know, figure out like the feet thing and my my ankle mobility. And I started piecing together all these these things that I had breakdown and why I wasn't a good squatter. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the things that uh, made me a much better squatter was being able to really brace the core. There's a lot of power that leaks in people's like, and this is also why when you t people that wear weight belts notice a big difference when they have a weight totally. belt and they squat, like what a difference. Like a lot of people yeah, can lift stable when 20, 50 not. more plus uh, 50, pounds. For me, it's 50 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and a lot, that's because you've, you've created this artificial basically, um, you know, Stability. core yeah. uh, for yourself. And so learning to really in, uh, intrinsically brace your core in a squat makes a big difference on your ability to, to, to power out of the hole. And it wasn't until I started doing Zercher squats because it was so hard on my core mm -hmm. that it trained me to really have to stabilize that in the squat. I got, and that was the biggest benefit. I, and also the year rounded back, I saw value in that for functional and real life. But I actually saw the carryover into mm -hmm. my barbell back squat because I got so good at bracing my core. Because you can kind of get away with a barbell back squat. You can kind of cheat the way you, you brace your core. Kind of rest on the. You can have a very way. loose kind of core. Yeah. And come in and out of the hole, and you'll and you'll see this like when someone comes out of a squat. There's a little bit of this kind of play. It's not like they they stay rigid when they squat. They kind of have this like flit and have a flimsy core, and a lot of power gets leaked out of that. And learning to to really brace hard through the whole movement that came for me from yeah. introducing Zercher squats yeah, the, into my the, into my lifts. The Zercher variations uh, develop my mid back, my glutes, and my core differently than the traditional variation. So, mm -hmm. it, the, I mean, the bottom line is it's a different exercise, but it's a very valuable uh, version of these exercises and incorporating them into your workouts, uh, you'll get benefits for sure. Strength and, and development benefits. Next question is from Timmy Lou Who. Can I do unilateral training indefinitely or should it be only used to fix symmet symmetry okay, issues? Good question. You know why it's a good question? Because now we need to talk about the benefit of training bilaterally. Because hmm. unilateral training is a tremendous benefit, especially because people don't do it. Especially because people don't do it. And it does balance out the left and the right. Um, and it does create lots of symmetry. And so for the average person who does a block, like if you follow map symmetry, most people are going to see huge gains in muscle development and in strength because most people don't do three months of unilateral Damn. style programming or training. That being said, that does not mean there isn't value in bilateral training. The value in bilateral training is the load and the power and the strength you could generate. You're just going to be able to generate more strength, more power, and create more tension with both hands and both feet. And there's lots of value in that as well. So like, if you only ever do... So let's say the let's say the world was flipped on its head and everybody only ever did unilateral training. They would get tremendous benefits from doing a block of yeah. bilateral training. So it's all got value. So could you do this in forever? Yeah, just like you could do bilateral training forever, but you would you would lose out on the value of bilateral training if you did that. Yeah, and I think too there's there's a lot of value in just being able to organize and recruit all of your muscles simultaneously in a beautiful way where uh you know uh, unilateral training, it, it helps to expose, um, it helps to kind of like expose like one, one side uh, responsibility versus the other and being able to kind of like stabilize and control a, a lot more. And that's the emphasis there is to be able to really like have control and stability over your body, but to be able to generate and produce force, that's where bilateral uh, exercises really kind of, uh, you know, exceed that. And, and it shows like really where, where the leaks, uh, it shows your true potential in terms of like how you can like really generate the ultimate amount of, of force. So I like this question because we can have a little bit of debate around this. Um, and what I mean by that is, first of all, let me frame it like this. One, uh, every time we get a like, you know, either or, or can I do this forever? We always are like, why? I mean, you have all these tools. Why wouldn't you utilize all the tools? Because that's what's going to give you the best long-term results is all these things have value and utilizing all of them would give you the greatest value. So why yeah. pick just one? Yeah. But if I w was forced to choose I can only train bilateral for the rest of my life, or I can only train unilateral for the rest of my life. I 100% would choose unilateral. Yeah. 100%. 
because of the benefits for stability, symmetry. That is so that is so important and safety too. Like I mean, there's so unilateral training, in my opinion, is I mean, and you you if you talk to like the or listen to the Mike Boyles of the world and stuff yeah. like that. If you only or, if you had to pick one, if you yeah, absolutely had to pick right. one. Right. And, and of course I would ne- we've all I think in every I hate that though, right? Like why I right? hate that. I hate that too. But again, for those and, and the reason why I don't I like to highlight this though is because if you are gonna get stuck stuck in a phase or get stuck in a, a way of training for a, an extended period of time, you're safer doing that in a unilateral yeah. space than you are in a bilateral space. Well, mm-hmm. plus that's you, how got val- you got the balance factor. Which that's right. That's what I'm saying. Get older and all yeah, that stuff. That's yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's just, you're going to get way more bang for your buck for there. But why would you ever do that? I don't think. Yeah, that. you don't well, have to just, pick. Yeah, there's a lot more situations where you're going to be in a split stance and you know, you're going to have, you're going to be loaded on one side versus the other like it's very much more realistic uh to assume like any any kind of even sport pursuit like you're always uh in a split stance for the most part and, to, and this is like the mike boyle's argument is to be able to load that uh, more effectively and have generate as maximal amount of force within that uh but then we're we're, we're depriving ourselves of really like uh, uh being able to train our body at, at an even higher capacity yep. which is with bilateral yeah uh, exercises. You, so yeah so you don't have to pick one or the other. This is it's not a black and white uh, world. You can do both, which you should. What are you sacrificing by only ever doing unilateral training? You want to be, be a strong, yeah, muscle power and strength. Yeah. Look, here's the deal. I don't. Regardless of how good you get with unilateral training, let's say you could. Let's say you got up to a, like like 200 pounds on your right leg. Okay. Yeah, I already know where you're going. You could still your right leg could do more weight by its with your left leg helping. In other words. Your max wouldn't be 400 pounds. Your max, in other words, right leg does 200, left leg can do two, uh, 200 by itself. Together, they'll do- Together, 450. Yeah, 450. Meaning your right yeah. leg is lifting more, yeah. and yeah. your left leg is also lifting more. Mm-hmm. So Because the body works better when it comes to generating power and strength when it works together. Mm-hmm. So it's not equal. You'll never be able to do half your max with one side yeah. that you could do with both sides. It doesn't work that way because the CNS fires better- when it's all firing together. Which, which, so you're sacrificing strength power. Which simplify that mm-hmm. even for the average person who maybe doesn't care to be, you know, super, super strong. But it's like, man, that gives you a greater capacity to build more muscle, which in turn, it gives you a greater capacity to speed up your metabolism more, which make, makes it easier to stay leaner longer, which improves yeah. Yeah. overall health and longevity. So there's a very easy case to make well, for here, I'll take it incorporating even, both. I'll for take sure. it even further. Uh, you'll get better at unilateral training if you incorporate bilateral training. Just like you'll get better at bilateral training right. if you incorporate unilateral training. So you're not just missing out on muscle and strength and power. You're also missing out, let's say you love unilateral training. You want to be the best you could possibly be at unilateral training. Utilizing bilateral training will make you better than if you didn't. So they 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 give each other benefit as well. That's how important it is to do both and why it's silly to just pick uh, one or the other. Look, if you like Mind Pump, Check this out. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all the free stuff that we're giving our audience. Also, you can find us on social media. We're all on Instagram. Justin can be found at Mind Pump Justin. Adam can be found at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me at Mind Pump DeStefano. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of weak points and and areas that I struggled with developing for a a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 